Welcome back to another episode of Ignite Agility. Today, we're going to be talking about the silly phrase, Scrum says, well, Scrum says, I mean, really, does Scrum talk? Christian, your thoughts. Your thoughts. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> it's not uncommon when you're learning this new thing that we can fall prey to what I call uh, being prescriptive. And we say that Scrum says this, and the Scrum Guide says that. And it's not a bad thing, folks. It's we all come from a place of wanting to do good. I remember learning that there's a new way of doing work. There's a different way of doing work. And so you want to do good. You want to do it well. Let me, let me correct my English. So why start now? And yeah, exactly. <laughs> and in the spirit of trying to do something better or do something good, we get really studious and we get into the weeds and we, we start to acquire knowledge. Good. However, we can lose sight that, you know, frameworks, they're supposed to provide us with options, not answers. And so what do you do? We can get prescriptive and we can say that scrum says, and you'll hear about folks and folks, I should say people who are maybe getting too prescriptive. They're, they're going too far into the weeds of here's what you need to do. Here's how you do this. They get into the how, and that's where we can go wrong as coaches. And if you like our content, please like and subscribe and let us know what you want to hear more of or less of. So back to this Scrum Says Nonsense for a second and you believing that it comes from a desire to have an answer or a prescription. We can go the other way with it where people will say Scrum doesn't say, which drives me equally as nuts because they'll say, well, the scrum guide doesn't say this. Well, the scrum guide doesn't say that. Well, scrum didn't tell you to put pants on today either, but some of you figured that out. Maybe not all. It's a framework. <laughs> He's got to check. He's got to check. It's a framework. And like you said, the framework doesn't provide answers. It's going to provide help to ask the questions that ideally we care about in our organizations. Correct. And the ahas are, you don't have to have all the answers. It's making sure you come up with the questions. And if you really want to look at it, are, are we solving the problems we hope to solve with this? What are we learning? And are we practicing what we preach and that we're not trying to be perfect, we're trying to be consistent in our approach and that we're looking at things, trying to inspect and adapt. and. I see it. I see it on the faces when the folks come to our CSM and some start to get that scared look in their eyes or some have the look in their eyes that, okay, I've been doing this for a while, but I didn't know that. And it's all a part of it. So yeah. what do you do? It's, it's not useful to say, well, I've been doing it all wrong. I want to go back and change this and go back and change that. Unless anybody has a DeLorean that can make it up to 88 miles an hour, we are not going back that was, in time. That wasn't real. <laughs> Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> We're not going back in time. All we can do is learn from that and move forward. So now that you do know, now that you do have new information or a new understanding, what are you going to do differently? Absolutely. And it's okay to, to be learning right alongside the people who might be new to the accountability product owner or new to this thing called developer. It's okay. Uh, you're like, well, it might be easy for you to say if we're all brand new. Same thing. If you're a new scrum master and you're around an established team, hey, I'm new to this role. All right, I'm learning as we go. And you can just check yourself. Just say, hey, am I trying too hard to find something to get better at as a process coach? Am I overreaching? Or is there something really here? That's fair. It's absolutely okay to ask for help and ask questions. So some people listening to this uh, who may have attended your workshop or one of my workshops or another member of our team may be thinking, I've even heard some of you say, Scrum says, I'm pretty sensitive to it, uh, so I'm working hard, not perfect, at eliminating that from my vocabulary. But we, we may fall into that trap and we may refer to what is in the guide, but it is just that. That framework is just a set of guidelines. And it's there 
to start the conversation. So one of the things I do with my students a lot is have them read a very specific paragraph, especially if people are weaponizing the scrum guide against each other, right? Well, scrum says this, scrum yeah, says that, blah, 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 blah. Put the, the snippet right up on the screen. More powerful if you're in a room and can look at a printed copy together, but I think it works just fine virtually, right? Put it right up on the screen and say, let's just take a minute and read the words that are there. And then I'll ask. What did you learn or what surprised you? And, and now we're using these guidelines as intended and letting people have the dialogue and ask the questions or, or posing what surprised them so that they can talk about what makes sense in their context as opposed to that's not right, that's not wrong, Scrum doesn't say this, it says that, oh, it doesn't talk. So. Any thoughts on that? Or have you used the, a similar technique or something like that? Not quite exactly. I, I, I do it from time to time, and I say, you know, if the Scrum Guide doesn't say, it really is meant for us to talk about what we're trying to do and how to solve it. But I like what you're doing in that you actually call it out to point out what it does say, but you let them talk about it. You let them come away with what they're – because that's what you're trying to do as a Scrum Coach, Scrum Master. You're trying to get people to talk to each other, as simple as that. And if those folks talk and they're aligned, I say it in my classes all the time, if the product owner, the stakeholders, and the people building it are aligned, we're doing something right. And some of the reactions to this stuff are so uh, visceral, not only the people who have their aha moment, but one that sticks in my mind recently, um, a speaker for one of our meetups that we host monthly was trying to be provocative. I mean. God forbid in this day and age of the, the sound bite or the tweet or you know the catchy headline, somebody try to be provocative. And they, they talked about the hole in the, scrum, in the Scrum framework. And of course, there's gaping holes. It's a framework. It's a set of guidelines. But somebody took it the other way too and was trying to, without even having the conversation on our meetup, in the comments, they were trying to say how it was wrong of us to even host such a topic. Because don't we understand that this is a framework, that it doesn't have all the answers? Yes, we do. It's a catchy headline. Calm down. <laughs> so I think people can get dogmatic with this stuff both ways. You know, saying, well, hey, there's not every answer in the Scrum Guide, and I'm used to that. Well, it's intentionally not complete. So what are you trying to say if something's missing? What, what do you think it, about that or what happens when you, you're faced with those kinds of I, dogmatic I say, ideas? Yeah, I say it's a barely viable framework. It, it, it's just enough to give you an idea of, I don't even know where to start, so it gives you that. And that's exactly it, it's a starting point. It, it's not an end point. So it gives us, I say, a barely viable framework. It is very thin. I mean, the 2020 update brought it down to 12 pages, down from 16 because they Maybe were Maybe if that, because I think the table you count of the front and the back, contents yeah. and the disclaimer so and all the other stuff. Why did they stuff? remove more than four pages? Because they thought it was getting a little too heavy, a little too pedantic. So I just say here was the intent and then talk about what you want to do with this. Any other final thoughts on no more Scrum says, Scrum doesn't say? Uh, it's, I'm a recovering perfectionist, and so I remember my aha moment when I, it really freaked me out, and, and it helped a lot to have someone like you tell me, you didn't know. Now you do. And so try as hard as you can not to beat yourself up for things that you didn't know in the past and now know go, I, I would have done it different. Well, isn't that most of us for all of our lives? So it, it really is just go easy on yourself, keep learning, keep trying, and, and keep having the discussion with the people that you work with. Don't make decisions for them in a vacuum. Progress, not perfection. Well, thank you for being with us today. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you would like and subscribe or leave us a comment down below.